All right, so now let's sum things up with respect to entering and exiting SMM. So when a system management interrupt fires, the processor is going to need to wait for, you know, the current assembly instructions to complete and things like stores to complete as well, stores to memory. So it basically needs to, you know, finish up doing what it's doing before it can like stop and go off to SMI, F, uh, off to SMM. And so that's why we say that SMI interrupts are handled on an architecturally defined interruptible point in program execution, such as instruction boundaries, modulo the fact that, you know, there's all of this pipelining and everything going on behind the scenes. Now, once an SMI fires, the processor is going to automatically save context and state about what's going on right now into SMRAM. And so that's very similar to the way that we saw with, you know, the interrupt descriptor table, that when a interrupt assembly instruction happens, some save state is going to be stored onto the stack, and that's going to be popped back off the stack by an IRET assembly instruction when you're returning from an interrupt. So that's just a general principle about interrupts. If you're interrupted, you need to save state to go somewhere else and then come back and restore the state. So in this case, the go somewhere else is to go to SMRAM where it's going to run code, but it's also going to save the state into SMRAM. And then also and importantly, if you have a multi-core processor, uh, none, of the SM, none of the cores are going to start executing system management interrupt handler code until all of the cores have in, entered into system management mode. Then we said exiting out of SMM is via the resume assembly instruction. And this is the only way to normally exit SMM other than just, you know, turning off the computer. So restarting or shutting down. Resume is going to be responsible for reading back out the contents of SMRAM, the contents of save state that have been stored in SMRAM and restoring them to the relevant registers. As part of that, if anything about the state that is being replaced into registers is invalid, the system will just straight up shut down. And then finally, resume can only be executed from within system management mode. If you try to run this from anywhere else, it's just going to cause an invalid opcode exception. And so specifically, if you see a resume assembly instruction, which is opcode 0FAA, if you see that while you're disassembling some code somewhere, if that code is valid and correctly disassembled and you're not just erroneously you know, disassembling some data, then you can be pretty confident that you have actually found some system management interrupt handler code. Okay, that's all I want to talk about for the basics of system management mode, entering, exiting, system management interrupts, various different forms, many other ones that we haven't talked about in this class. Now we need to move on to system management RAM where the actual system management interrupt code runs from.